Hello all, welcome to this hopefully short video where we look at graphing quadratics and it's more so looking at the requirements of graphing quadratics. We've already gone over the skills we need to, so all the different factorization methods, uh, using the null factor law to find out what the x-intercepts are and of course just letting uh, x equal to zero to find the y-intercept um, but this is uh, the non-negotiables and so hopefully you remember this from one of the first classes where we briefly touched on it but this is more explicit um, so by non-negotiable I mean that they must be included um, you will be losing marks if these are missing um, and we want to we want to build this habits now so it helps you come year 12 exam time in particular because um, we want to avoid any reason for examiners to take marks from you um, so for quadratics the following must be presented and labeled so y-intercept the x-intercepts if they if they're present so sometimes there's a quadratic that doesn't have x-intercepts um, and then the turning point or vertex now all three of these things must be in coordinate form um, a lot of the t time quadratics are poorly drawn and they don't, what you draw if they're poorly drawn don't represent the function. We must remember that a quadratic is an equational function and we must represent that in a graph correctly. Um, and we, the marks generally disappear for lack of care. So the marking scheme that we normally use is as follows. Okay. This is how your three marks break down. You'll get three marks for each of these things if they are correct. Um, you, or you could think about it, you start with three marks and then you lose each of these marks if they are incorrect. Um, so shape, we give a whole mark to the shape. So we want uh, to be the correct parabolic shape. So that means it is a nice U or N shape and not something that is like that or squished up. It's we want to make sure it is a um, nice parabolic shape and um, it has some form of symmetry around the turning point. Um, we don't want it uh, non-symmetrical and we want it, of course, the correct direction. Um, so if you've drawn it that when it's supposed to be that, then that'll be wrong. Um, one mark to that. X-intercepts. Um, labelled and labelled in coordinate form, you get half a mark for each correct intercept. Um, y-intercepts, half a mark for the correct y-intercept, and then half a mark for the correct turning point. Um, there's also this last point here, um, which is assumed to always be correct, but it, so you're not getting a mark for it if you do it, but you will lose a mark if it's not there, um, which is correct and consistent scale. And I'll explain a little bit more about that, but that's just making sure our x scale is consistent to itself, and then the y scale is consistent to itself. Um, the way we're going to go about this to make it a bit more fun is you ought to look at these following graphs and identify if they would get full marks out of three, and if not, why are they losing marks and what for. Um, so at the start of each of these, pause the video, have a look yourself, try and identify anything that's missing um, or done incorrectly, and give it a score out of three. Then after you've paused it, um, restart the video and I will let you know how we've gone. So pause now. Okay, so this one is pretty good. Um, the shape's pretty good. We have x-intercept 1, we have x-intercept 2, both labelled in coordinate form. We have our y-intercept there, labelled in coordinate form, but we're actually missing our turning point. We're missing turning point, so 2 pre minus a half a mark. Um, shape is good, and then also our x-axis is pretty consistent, so if we look, that's negative 1 there, that means 1 would be about there, that means 2's there, pretty happy with that, and down to 0, negative 1, that is fine there, and since we don't have any turning point coordinates, we can't actually figure out if the y-axis is consistent, but we'll take that, so half a point, so that is 2.5 marks. Pause the video now.
Okay, right here. So this one, hmm, 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 hmm. What do we think? Uh, overall, this I would give not a whole lot of marks. So let's have a look. Um, intercept, uh, not in um, coordinate form. So minus a half. Same over here, not in coordinate form. So minus another half a mark. Uh, up here. This is this ties into shape, but is this the y intercept? Is this the turning point? It is not clear. Uh, so y intercept not in coordinate form. So minus half a mark. Uh, uh, not turning point doesn't exist, or it's not clear if it is at that point or not. Minus half a mark, and lastly the shape. And this is where it comes into turning point. This side over here is very different from this side here, um, not symmetrical, uh, so shape is poor as well, um, it's clear that it is uh, inverted quadratic roughly, I would only take half a mark, um, so this whole quadratic only gets half out of three. Um, tough marking but it isn't a clear representation of the equation, fortunately. <laughs> um, rightio. Okay, uh, pause your video. Right, so I had a bit of a chuckle at the shape. Hopefully, you did too. Quite clearly, we're going to lose half a mark at least for the shape. Um, x intercept, x intercept, both in coordinate form and the scale is consistent coming across the three over here is the same as a relative scale maybe a little bit off but coming over negative four over there so that's fine so we get a mark each there uh, y intercept is there and turning point is also there um, but we have this weird squiggly issue um, and that's coming from an inconsistent just y scale. So if we think all the way up to there is 12, so that means there is 6, that's 9, 11. So that space there is just 1. But up here, our turning point is at 12.25, and that is drawn almost at 14. If we use the y-intercept as a proper scale, it is drawn way too high and it should be about there. If green is correct, so it should be coming through like that. Okay. Also this line is coming almost straight down. The line needs to be shown to be going on and on outward still. Okay. Quadratic doesn't have straight lines that end up parallel going straight down. They still have some component that's going outwards. As you can see, even my line's not the neatest, but that is still better and clear shape. Um, a hint for, and I'm doing it on tablet, trying to correspond with this while looking at the screen, so it's a bit harder for me. But what you can do is start at the turning point and go through the intercept and then go out to your other two intercepts as one solid line. So that's a lot better. Um, so inconsistent y scale and shape is poor, so lose half each for those, so we get two out of three. Um, okay. After x intercept, yes, x intercept, yes, turning point, yes. Um, across half to three quarters to one, so our x axis scale is consistent, so that's great. We are only missing our y int, just missing that. Um, so missing our y intercept, so minus a half, so this one's getting two and a half. As we can see, we've got our arrows at the end, the quadratic is going out. Continuing out, it's not going straight up. Um, you also instantly lose um, half a mark if you ever draw the line coming back in. That never happens. 
Oh, speak of the devil. So, pause your video. Right, just as I was talking about, quadratics never technically do this, so that is wrong. Okay, so shape. Okay. We're going to lose a whole mark for that. That that this drawing is not of a quadratic. Um, x intercepts. Both there, lovely y intercept there, turning point there. Um, to go along with this shape, which has got to do with us, um, we're gonna we have an issue again with scale. So up to here, our y coordinate is seven on four, so that is one point eight ish, or one point seven five. Okay. While well, then up to here is seven. Um, also going across, that's one, so that's what about one there. That would be about two there. Well, it's all the way over here. Um, so with our x and y axes, we can have different scales between the two. So what I mean by that is you can, depending on what the graph is, we could have that as one, that as two, that as negative one, that as negative two. And then your y axis, as long as the y axis is consistent within itself, this could be 20, this could be 40, that could be negative 20, that could be negative 40. And sometimes in real world applied situations, this scale will be much more useful because one could be days and the 20 and the 40 could be profit margins or something. It could be 2,000, 40,000. As long as the y-axis within itself is consistent and the x-axis within itself is consistent, um, then that's fine. But in this case, the x-axis is not consistent and the y-axis is not consistent. So minus half a mark for that. So this person only gets one and a half. For what seems like a lot of work, they got both intercepts, or all three intercepts and the turning point, all right. They just drew it really poorly. And when we're being asked to graph, we're testing our representational skills, our graphical representational skills. Right, so... Uh, here's a problem for you to have an attempt at. I will do it in a second, um, but if you, I suggest having a go yourself first um, and then checking. So pause now if you want. Rightio. Um, this doesn't work. The shift lock doesn't work for me. We should always draw axes with a ruler, um, but using my tablet, I can't use a ruler, but let's have a go. So we've got y equals negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. The first thing I notice is the negative x squared, therefore instead of being regular u-shape, it's going to be an inverted parabola like that. Okay, so uh, let's find our intercept. So our y-intercept, we let x equals 0, so y ends up equaling 5. And then I'll write it as a coordinate, 0, 5. X intercepts, find next. I'm going to let y equal to 0. So we get 0 is equal to negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now, this negative in front, I'm going to take that out as a common factor. Um, so just to show the full working out, I'm taking it out the front. So that will then turn this into negative 4x minus 5. And why am I doing that? Well, this is going to actually make inspection, factorizing via inspection work correctly, or if you have to complete the square, you want to get rid of that negative. So we now get uh, multi divide both sides by negative 1. 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. So we get x squared minus 4x minus 5. So we get factorizing via inspection. We need two things multiply to give negative 5 and add to give negative 4. So I'm going to get x. It is going to be negative 5 plus 1. Therefore, using the null factor law, we get x minus 5 equals 0, or we get x plus 1 equals 0. So x is equal to 5, or x is negative 1. So my two coordinates now are 5, 0, and I have have negative 1, 0. Okay. 
now that I've had these, I can use this grid because a lot of times we'll give you the grid but not the axes drawn on it. Um, so don't go straight away sometimes putting that in because it might be, and it's not quite in this case, but it might be that the graph is over here and you've wasted all this um, table space. So I find the intercepts first. That gives me an idea of reference scale where to use up the axis. So I'm going to be all the way at five, over at five, but only at negative one. So I'm going to slightly offset my axes and my y-intercepts up at five. So I'm going to do something like that. That's my y. That's my x. Okay, over at five. One, two. Five there, one there, label them in coordinate form. Up at zero five. Five. Okay. Now I'm gonna stop there because I have a feeling looking at this and the if I continue this symmetrically. I know the turning point's going to be midway. I might end up here, so that Y scale is not going to work for me. So I'm going to find my turning point now. Okay. So TPX is halfway between the two coordinates. So it's X1 plus X2 divided by 2. Two intercepts. So we get 5 plus neg 1 on 2 is equal to 4 on 2 is 2. Um, so TPY is equal to, we substitute that into our original equation, is equal to negative 2 squared plus 4, 2, 5 is equal to 2 squared is 4, negative 4. Um, and just to clarify, the squared symbol in Lester's brackets is only actually impacting the x. That would be including the negative sign, but since it's not written there, it's technically the x all squared, then the negative sign gets applied to it. So 4 times 2 is 8. Take away the 4 from out front is 4 plus 5 is 9. So the my turning point happens to be 2, 9. So this is this time when I can make my y scale different to the x as long as the y scale itself is consistent. So I'm going to call that 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So my y intercept was at 5, so right there. 5, and my turning point is at 2, 9. Right there. And then using my hint, start at the turning point, draw that in first. Then draw our lines down from there. And again, I apologize doing a blue line on a tablet. But there's our graph. That's it for today. Um, go on with exercise 3F questions from the textbook. As per normal, if you have questions, you can also stick them in uh, Google Classroom. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll put lots of videos up here, even join the notification squad. That's it for today, and see you around.